Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as he said, my name is Lawanda Burrell, and in June of 2010, I was asked a question that, first of all, I never thought anyone would be asking me this question. And I knew that um, my answer to this question would um, affect the rest of my life. And the question that I was asked is, would you like to remove both of your breasts or just one? And that was a question that was asked to me by my breast surgeon, Dr. Barbara Kruger. The reason why this question was asked is because, again, my name is Lawanda Burrell. I am the instructional designer, as he said. I am a mother of a wonderful four-year-old boy. I'm a sister. I'm a friend. But most importantly, I am a breast cancer survivor. And the story that I'm going to share with you today is going to talk about how I use perseverance and hope to get over or get past and survive an illness that threatened to take my life. The picture that you see here is me back in 2009. Good looking picture, right? Um, I had just turned 33 years old. And this picture is literally me leaving the spa with my two very best friends of over 30 years. We went to the spa. We had a good day. I had a new haircut. Uh, we made plans. We were going out for drinks to have a good time. I was feeling on top of the world, feeling great. Little did I know that in less than six months, I would be making decisions about chemotherapy. I would be going through testing over $60,000 worth of testing to determine what stage cancer I was at. I would be losing all of my hair and I would be making life-changing decisions. So I kind of went from this girl right here to this girl right here. And this picture that you're looking at is actually me in July of 2010. At this point, I had already had one chemotherapy treatment. I had already went through one surgery and again I had undergone so many tests that I could I can't even explain to you how many testing how many tests I went through. I was diagnosed on May 21st, 2010. It's a very uncomfortable call to get to say you are 33 years old and you have breast cancer. Now you guys know if you read that you're not even required to get a mammogram until you're 40 years old, right? You're supposed to wait until we're 40 years old. If I had waited until I was 40 years old, I'd be dead. I was 33 years old and I was doing my due diligence, and ladies, I recommend that you do yours. I was examining myself and I found my own lump. So in essence, I am a part of the journey that saved my own life. Breast cancer is scary. Don't let anyone lie to you. Getting a diagnosis of cancer, I didn't know anything about cancer. My family dies from heart attacks. They die from diabetes, things like that. We had no idea. This is something that came out of left field. And it was very overwhelming because I, I just didn't know how to respond. But what did happen for me on, I think it was about um, May 26th, I spoke with my breast surgeon. She called me. And after all this testing, I had one particular test and it was a breast MRI. And she called me and she said, Lawanda, I've got some good news and some bad news. And I said, okay, you know, I always want the bad news first. She said, the bad news is you have something called triple negative breast cancer. I said, okay. She said, triple negative breast cancer is the leading cause of cancer that kills African American women. Well, I'm standing here, I'm African American. So that was negative. The good news was I had five tumors. I know that sounds bad, but I had five tumors. And when I was doing my self-exam, of course, I could only feel one. But I had five tumors, and the good news was they were all the same cancer. Because sometimes you could have five tumors and have five different cancers. But she said this one line to me that helped me determine how I was going to take this journey. And she said, you're young. We can get this. We're talking about your breast. We're not talking about your life. And when she said that to me, I said, okay, then tell me what I need to do. Let's go. So with that, I decided, you know what? I'm going to handle this. I'm going to use two things. I'm going to use perseverance, and I'm going to use hope, and I'm going to get through this. 
If you're not familiar with perseverance, perseverance is just pretty much saying no matter what obstacle you're faced with, no matter what comes your way in life, you will, you will reach the finish line. You will go through it. And I decided that that's what I was going to do. I have a personal blog that I use. It's just for me. It's how I capture my thoughts. And what I'm showing you here are actually my statements that I said to myself on May 26 when I started blogging about this horrible disease that was attacking my body. I said to myself, Lawanda, I said, you can have your life changed in an instant. It's one conversation, one decision, one lump, and everything can go wild. And that's exactly what happened. One moment, I was having a good time with my friends. I was 33, live, having a good time. The next moment, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. The next thing I said to myself was, I trust God. I believe God. I know who God is. And I don't know what you all believe, but I know what I believe. And I always believed that God was going to deliver me. I always believed that God was going to heal me. And I always knew that he would not allow this disease to break my spirit. And so I stand before you today. I stand delivered. I stand healed. And I stand with my spirit intact. The last thing I said to myself was, there's this little boy, this cute little boy, and he kind of has my heart, and he needs me, and his name is Langston Jeremiah Love, and I said, you know what, he needs me. If something happens to me, yeah, somebody else could take care of him. He has a great father. He can take care of him, but I needed to be there, and so I decided, you know what, we're a team, and we'll defeat this, and so that's what I did. I'm an instructional designer, and in instructional design, we use this concept, and it's called chunking. And what chunking does is you take a large concept, big piece of content, and you break it down into little bitty bite-sized pieces so that your, your students will understand the concept. So by design, I use that same process for my journey. I broke it down into three chunks. The first chunk was testing. When I was diagnosed with breast cancer, the first thing I thought was, okay, nothing's happening. You know, I was walking around here with this big secret. Nobody at work knew what was going on. Nothing was happening. I'm taking all these tests. They can't give me any information. Um, and it's easy to get o overloaded with a lot of information when you hear about a diagnosis. We got the Internet and we got people and, you know, we got stories. And so I decided, you know what, I'm going to use one resource. Here's my resource. My doctor gave me this resource the day they gave me the um, pathology reports where they told me what stage cancer I had. And by the way, I was stage two breast cancer, which it goes from zero to four. So when I heard the word two, I was kind of feeling uncomfortable, but that's still early detection. And so I decided that I would not read anything. I wouldn't go on the Internet. I wouldn't take anybody's articles. All I would do is read this resource. So this became my breast cancer Bible. So every time I got to a chunk, I would go to my breast cancer Bible, read the materials. So I started out with testing. The next chunk was chemotherapy. Now, I know that seems a little backwards. You have cancer, you get surgery, right? Wrong. There are over hundreds of, of, there's hundreds of breast cancers out there. I had no idea about that either. I thought you get cancer in one part of your body, that's what happens. You know, they treat it that you go on. That's not the way it works. Depending on what type of cancer you have, and remember I had triple negative, um, they do a therapy according to that. Because I had triple negative, and remember I told you that was not a good type of cancer to have for African American women. One of the things that's bad about triple negative is you can only treat it with chemotherapy. So if chemotherapy didn't work for me, that was it. I didn't have any other choices. I couldn't take pills. I couldn't do any of the other therapies that you use for cancer. All I had was chemo. So we started out with chemotherapy. I had six rounds of chemo, which came out to 18 weeks. I came to work every time I had chemo. And I know that sounds like a lot, but it really helped me to get up every morning, go to chemo, and then come to work after I had my treatments. And that's what I did. When I had chemo, they gave me my cocktail is what it was called. I had the strongest cocktail that you could give someone my age. The, the, the medicines that they gave me, they told me that I could only take those one time in my lifetime. 
So they had to give it to me, and they had to give it to me hard. So we went with that. When it was time for chemotherapy, came to the book, found the medicine, saw all the side effects, and I had some of them. There were over 30 side effects to the treatments. I think I had about four or five. My last chunk was surgery. To this date, I've had four surgeries. Still have one small surgery to go. It's not really a big deal. But when it was time for surgery, then I had to come back to the book, and I had to decide, you know, what type of surgery I wanted to have. Now, remember that question I had to answer at the beginning? I had to make that decision. Did I want one breast gone or two? Funny thing happened in making the decision. The way I came to the conclusion about this decision was through our student aid here in Moraine Valley. We had a student aide. She was studying to be a doctor. And one day she was just in my office talking to me about my experience. And she, I guess she noticed that I was going back and forth about whether or not to remove both my breasts because I only had cancer in one breast. And so I began to tell her that my fears were, I just didn't want to be in surgery. I just could not be in surgery for six to eight hours. I just didn't want to do that. That was my only reason for not removing both of my breasts. And so she began to explain to me that when I'm in surgery, because it's breast surgery, they're going to be on the outside. She said, they're not going to be in your chest wall. They're not going to be in your chest cavity. She said, think about it as you have on clothes and then you put on a jacket. She said, they're going to unzip the jacket. You're still going to have your clothes on. That's it. When she broke it down, again, our student aide, when she broke that down for me like that, now I've talked to 10, 20 doctors. They did not remove that fear. Spoke to my student aide, and the next hour I got on the phone to my breast surgeon, and I made the decision to have a, a bilateral mastectomy with um, immediate reconstruction. And so I thank her for that. The other piece to my journey had to do with hope. These people on the screen here, this is my family, and they are wonderful. On November 27th of 2010, maybe a little bit of a month after my, my last chemotherapy treatment, they threw me something called Pink Party. My nickname's Pooh, so that's why the uh, Pooh was up there. But we had a big party, and this party was fantastic. Everybody wore pink. The food was pink. We had pink balloons. We had gifts. Everybody was celebrating. It was one of the best days of my life. And one of the things that was most significant to me about this day was the date. You see, if cancer wasn't enough, I was also in the middle of a horrible divorce. And divorce, cancer, I mean, what else, you know, do I need, right? But November 27th was my wedding day. And my family put this party on my wedding day on purpose so that I would have a great memory of November 27th instead of the previous memory. So aren't, aren't they great, great, great group of people? Yeah, good family, good family. We had a ball. The next thing I did was I created a website. I have over 61 first cousins. My dad had 15 brothers and sisters. So I got cousins all over the United States. People were calling me left and right, checking on Pooh, wanting to know how Pooh was doing. And it was just too much. It was too many phone calls to take. So I created a website. And on the website, only my family and friends with this special code could get on this website. At the end of my journey, I had over 1,000 hits on this website where people had went to visit me and send me well wishes and, you know, stayed in contact with me during my journey. And even today, when I have my moments and I'm feeling bad, I go back and I visit my, my caring bridge which I named the Network of Hope. It's one more group, and that's these people. What you're looking at here is my group here. If you don't know already, Moraine Valley is a great place to work. And these people were fantastic. When I came in here after chemo, they were always taking care of me, always looking out for me. These pictures that you're seeing are the day before my last chemo treatment. Everybody wore pink. Even my guys wore pink, came in, and we had a celebration. And I walked around, and my library coworkers and my CTO coworkers were very supportive, always checking on me, always taking care of me. You see, the hope part was the best part. 
because not only was I believing, but I had this whole team of people believing. And my mom always told me that, you know, prayer is powerful, but corporate prayer, corporate prayer is even more powerful. And so that's what we did. This woman, I had to show you, I have to go back and point to her. This is the student aide that helped me make that decision. She's no longer with us. So she's gone on to study to be a doctor. Nita Judah was the one that helped me make that decision. So where am I at today? This is me. This is me today, 2012. First of all, I'm cancer free. That number one is where I am today. Thank you. <laughs> Second of all, I'm happy. You know, I'm happy. I'm healthy. You know, I am, I'm surviving. Things have changed. Yes, things have changed. I look at things a lot different now. One of the things that has changed the most, and this came from a friend who had a husband that survived cancer twice. And she shared this one mantra with me, and I take it with me every day. And she said that her husband told her that if it's not life and death, then it can be worked out. And that's the mantra that I live with every day. So as I told you before, my name is Lawanda Burrell. Thank you for listening to my story. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm.